what is going on guys man we're back with another episode of lsu recruiting hq we got a lot to talk about today uh gonna get into uh some lsu football news with uh, the defensive coordinator search again uh not going the way lsu fans i'm sure have hoped uh, we're going to talk about LSU basketball, man. LSU basketball getting whooped. Getting whooped by Alabama on Tuesday night. Uh, that was just an amazing performance. I'm, I don't really want to go too in-depth on that. We're going to talk about uh, Reed Gilbert and Elias Rex possibly transferring, man. That would kill the two best recruits you get from a signing class, and they're both gone, man. That would, uh, that would suck. So we're definitely going to talk about that. We're going to talk about LSU landing a cornerback commit again out of uh, Texas. And uh, we're going to be going in depth in a lot of stuff, man. I hope you guys enjoy it. All right, guys. Like we just said, man, the first thing I want to talk about is uh, something that LSU fans have been asking for a lot. And uh, that's this uh, a Reed Gilbert and Elias Rick situation. And the latest I'm hearing on that is... Uh, Elias Ricks, you know, the guys from Rivals, uh, made a video yesterday talking about how, you know, one of his sources from LSU said that this is a possibility now and no means is this like a done deal type thing or it's going to even happen. You know, he said it's just rumors. It's just smoke at this point. He, he just, you know, I, I got a feeling he's just doing it for likes and clickbait and you know all that other good stuff that uh, those guys like to do. But um, yeah, I'm, I wouldn't buy too much stock into this man's already enrolled into the spring semester uh, with with Elias Riggs. Not much I I would worry about if I was on the LSU front. Um, but the Reed Gilbert situation is starting to trend upward. I think personally. Uh, this week we found out that he has contacted LSU about possibly returning, which is a huge step. I mean, for a while there, it definitely looked like, you know, he was gone. It was Georgia, Tennessee, Florida, and maybe some of that stuff that's going on in Tennessee has uh, convinced them to rethink what's going on. So, and uh, I've always heard, you know, everything I've heard people say is, you know, Arik didn't leave because it was the football culture or it was a him and Ed Ogeron thing, he you know he left on his own because he had personal issues to take care of. And whatever those issues are, we're never gonna know about. But obviously they were great enough for him to leave in the middle of the season. And you know, with the COVID year going around, I mean, I'm I'm in no place to tell a, a 18, 19 year old kid how to what to do with their life and what's the best decision for them. So obviously, Arik's a great football player, and we would love to have him back at LSU. But you know, if if whatever he's dealing with right now doesn't let him do that, then uh, as LSU fans, I think we should respect his decision because he is still just a kid, and a lot of people forget that. Um, but honestly, in my personal opinion, I think he's gonna do. He's gonna come back. I really do. I think his mom wants him to stay at LSU um, and whatever is going on I think can be resolved and I think I think he'll be back for uh, when spring practices start and all that so so hopefully I'm right and uh, hopefully we can get our our star tight end back and uh, balling out on the field on on Saturdays in the fall all right now we're going to talk about this debacle of a defensive coordinator hiring search um, I I don't I'm just tired of talking about this kind of stuff, you know. I'm not going to blame Ed Ogeron. I'm not. I mean, I think this is a lot to do with just uh, Sean Payton being petty. But a little bit of the blame needs to be put on Ed Ogeron because he didn't do the research, all right? This is not all on the Saints, you know. The Saints are just... I mean, don't get me wrong, they could have helped the brother out, but <laughs> but uh, they didn't. And uh, so Coach O needs to do more research, man. You got to look through these contracts. You're telling me you've known Bo Pelini was going to get fired for the last three months, probably. I don't remember exactly when the Auburn game was, but that was the game I knew he should have got fired. 
I'm pretty sure the rest of the LSU fans knew that day too. So, how do you not know that Ryan Nielsen has a clause in his contract that the Saints could block him from going to LSU to be a defensive coordinator? Like, how do you not know that? How do how do you not get agents together and how do you not talk about these things? And um, because that'd be the first thing I want to know. Now, whether they conducted business correctly, I personally don't think they did because I don't think Sean Payton would have acted this way if Coach O calls him up on Monday, say, hey, man, tough loss, but we're going to be, we would like to interview your defensive line coach for our defensive coordinator position. I don't think there would have been a problem with that. The problem came where, you know, Sean Payton doesn't find out until he's ready to take the job and then. Sean Payton, you know, he's already pissed off because the Saints choked for the fourth year in a row. Uh, that's a topic for a different day. But yeah, so I mean, so he just he blocks the the proposal and and then he gives Ryan Nielsen a raise because the guy who was the uh, so, assistant head coach just took the head coaching job for the Lions. So now he promotes him to assistant head coach. And now LSU's back where they were, stuck with no defensive coordinator. Uh, and God forbid, I have no clue what kind of names could possibly be throwing out there right now. Um, I couldn't even give you the first name. I mean, you know, they're still talking about guys like Barry Odom, you know, people like that. But I, at this point, I <laughs> I have no clue. I personally, I would like. I don't know. I would see like to see somebody from the NFL maybe come in and uh and revamp this defense, you know, bring the NFL schemes, you know, that's what the players want, our ultimate goal is is get to the NFL. So if you can bring NFL concepts to college, man, I think it'll be a big uh recruiting factor and I think it's a big factor on the field as well because, you know, a lot of these offenses are are pro style what the pros are running now man but they're just some more up tempo so I think if you can throw different looks at them you can uh, teach these kids how to be in the right position at the right time man it'll help them not only in college but it definitely help them at the next level and that's uh, something I would like to see for sure alright guys I'm going to go over this basketball game that happened on Tuesday night not going to go over very long uh, I'm gonna let you guys hear what Will Wade has to say first, and then I'm gonna get my. You're gonna get my thoughts on the game and how it went, and if it was even preventable, because I don't think it was. All right, here's Will Wade talking about Alabama loss. All right, we got um, you know, we got whipped in every facet tonight. It's uh, it's totally my fault. Um. Don't put this on the players. It was me. I didn't have us prepared. I didn't do a good enough job in preparation. I didn't do a good enough job um, having our guys with the right spirit and, and, and right urgency and hunger um, that we needed for this game. Um, Alabama played phenomenally, uh, hitting all those threes at the beginning of the game. Petty was hot and did a uh, and, and, and really um, took it to us. But uh, once again, it's uh, it was uh, an all systems breakdown. Um, starting with uh, start with an ending with me, and we've got to uh, pick ourselves up off the mat, not let this game beat us twice, and find a way to go to Lexington and, and certainly play better uh, on Saturday night. Yeah, it's. I mean, if they're making if they're making threes, I should do something better with our guys defensively and their hand placement and 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 where we are uh, where we are defensively. So, you know, it's it's. Uh, it's uh, it's on me, and we've got to uh, we've got to get it fixed um, because we were we were beaten every way tonight. And give Alabama a ton of credit; they were more ready than us, they were more excited than us, and they uh, they played they played a lot better than we did. And so we've got to uh, we've got to dig down and and uh, you know like I said, it's one game. We got a lot of other we've got a lot of other games left. We've played well in spurts. We just haven't been as consistent as we need to, and we've got to. We've got to um, dig down and, and, um, and, and, and dig ourselves out and have a couple good days of practice and preparation and get, get ready for Kentucky on Saturday. So as we just heard from Will Wade, man, LSU gets stomped by Alabama at the PMAC, man. The final score was 
four to seventy uh, seventy five and my goodness it was a uh, it was it wasn't even that close I don't even think I mean they lost by thirty and it still didn't feel like they were even that close man they were out this game before the jump ball even hit the floor oh man they hit their first seven three pointers man first seven shots they took from three-point range they nailed every single one of them man petty was unbelievable nobody could stop him and you know i like to criticize this lsu's defense a lot in basketball because well basketball and football uh but this this year they've actually been better and uh you know they've been showing a lot of improvements and but I mean, they were putting hands up, and there was just nothing they could do. I mean, they're not, they've never been great at defending the three point line. You know, I looked at what the Alabama guy said after his press conference, also, and you know, he said, you know, LSU says they're going to defend the three point line better, but until they until they actually do it, you know, we're not going to change what we're going to do. And we knew we were going to get shots because they don't defend the three point line very well. And. The only thing you can take away from this game is, you know, sometimes you just got to get your butt whipping in and then move on, hopefully get better from it. Just definitely can't let this game beat you twice, man. You got a tough, uh, tough schedule coming up, man. You got to go to Lexington, to A&M, and then you got to face this Alabama team again on the road. So it's definitely, they are in the meat of their schedule right now. And, uh, I mean, everybody's out here complaining about why LSU is not ranked in the top 25. And if you can point out a quality win on their schedule, you, I'd love to see it. Because right now, every quality team they face, they've lost to. They lost to St. Louis. They lost to Florida. Florida's not even a great team, but they're a good team. You know, they just beat Tennessee this week. They're a good team. LSU's a good team. But like I said, they're going to have to start performing better and they're going to have to start winning some of these games and uh, definitely going to have to start with Saturday. Saturday is a big game for them because they need to bounce back and Kentucky's not a great team. Kentucky has had their struggles all season, you know. Last week watching them, I thought they were turning a corner after getting beat by Alabama, kind of like the LSU did. And then they come back and they lose to, lose to Auburn this week. And it looks like uh, Calipari's team isn't isn't as uh, as proven as he'd like at this point in the season. So, so LSU's definitely got to play well still to win this game. But uh, it's one they got to win, man. They got to get back on track to, to keep up with the guys in SEC play. They want to have a chance to uh, win the league and, you know, get a double bye in the first uh, couple rounds of the SEC tournament. That'll go a long way into what their NCAA seed will be. Um, but that's all I'm going to talk about. Basketball, man, they got a game coming up this weekend against Kentucky. Like I said, uh, make sure you guys tune in and watch that. It's going to be a, a great game, and I look forward to watching LSU bounce back because I don't think that they're going to let this loss linger in their head. I kind of think it was one of those where they, they get in the locker room and then that's it, man. Just forget about it, throw it away, and uh, we can move on from there. So, so that's it. All right, last thing we're going to talk about is uh, personally my favorite sport to watch, and that's going to be LSU baseball. They just announced that they... They released their 2021 schedule, and uh, I'm glad to see that they're going to be playing all 56 games. You know, they got a, they had to make a schedule change on Wednesday because uh, UC, I don't even know, Santa Barbara, somebody out there, you know, said they couldn't come and play, so they're going to schedule a game with, uh, or three games with Youngstown State uh, first, the second series of the season. Uh, we're interesting schedule here for the Tigers, man. They got a, of course, every weekday game they're gonna play a D D one school from Louisiana, and uh, this year they host Vanderbilt, they host South Carolina, they go to Ole Miss, they host Arkansas, uh, and they go to A and M. So those are some marquee matchups, man. I'm glad to see that they got Vanderbilt at home. That'd be a big plus. That's always a great 
and Mississippi State, yeah. Well, for Mississippi State leads off conference play, man. That'll be a big time, big time matchup to start off a uh, conference play. And uh, the first game is just a month from now, man. It's a uh, February nineteenth, man. They play in the Armed Forces Classic, you know, where they invite Air Force, you know, Navy, all them guys. Uh, they play Notre Dame, Louisiana Tech, teams like that. Uh, this baseball team, man, they got a lot of potential, man. Uh, this pitching staff is unreal, man, if they can stay healthy. Um, this team has the capabilities to go as far as these arms will take them, if that makes sense to y'all. But, but Landon Marceau is ob and Jaden Hill are obviously going to headline the rotation, man, and they are going to be Friday and Saturday night guys all year. And I got a feeling they're going to be at least Jaden Hill. I mean, the pro potential for him getting drafted in the first round is very high. Landon Marceau still got a lot to prove, but uh, easily if he has a great year, you know, he could jump into that first, second round as well. Uh, man, is he's a great pitcher. And uh, unfortunately, last year, I think he made tremendous strides as far as being the ace. And then, the, obviously, the season was cut short. So we'll get to see we'll get to see LSU baseball for the first time this year, man. Starting middle of February, and uh, I I can easily say I'm looking forward to it. Obviously, you know LSU's got the deal with SEC Network, so most of these games will be viewable, which has always been a plus, man. I remember the days where you know couldn't watch these these uh, any of these baseball games unless till they really got to the postseason, and it was uh, it was always tough. So. So I'm looking forward to seeing what all the freshman position players can do. You know, I'm hearing good great things about Dylan Cruz, man, in that outfield. So, so I'm just looking forward to that and uh, hope they have a great season. And all right, we're gonna talk about a name that LSU fans probably aren't too familiar with until Wednesday night, and uh, that is the man by the name of Marcus Scott. He is a cornerback from Woodlands, Texas, and he's a four-star athlete. And he just picked up his LSU offer within the last three weeks, and he announced on Wednesday night that he was committed to LSU and Ed Ogeron. And this is a big pickup for Corey Raymond, man. After uh, Nate Wiggins decommitted and went to Clemson this past year, uh, 2022 is going to be a, a, a good class to get a lot of corners in, man. They're going to need to fill up that room again. Uh, especially with Stingley leaving, you know, the guys playing behind Ricks and Stingley this year, you know, they were good, but uh, uh, we definitely need to have more options, let's just say that, you know, this guy, Marcus, is a tall, rangy kid, uh, he runs track, um, fast, 6'2", you know, can play, play outside corner, covers deep ball as well. Uh, this past week, he made a, a visit to LSU on his own dime, and uh, I guess that's where he made his final decision. You know, he just committed this week, so so obviously whatever went on in that visit, you know, it it went well for LSU, and LSU's getting a, a good kid, a good kid out of Texas, and uh, they've already got the number three recruiting class in the nation. This is their eighth commitment after losing a uh, shrunk. Sh Sean Washington from Warren Easton, defensive tackle this week. But, uh, you know, LSU can definitely get back in the mix on that. So uh, they, got a, they got a lot to work with this 2022 class, and uh, it'd be interesting to see how they finish. They uh, fill out this class with all the talent in Louisiana. You know, there's obviously going to be guys where they're not going to be able to get just because of uh, – that position is not a big need, so I mean, we'll we'll see what Coach O do, does if he goes if he goes for the talent or he goes what what this roster needs, which he's shown he's, he he always goes for what this roster needs, you know. But he also brings in talented skill position guys like he always does. So so we'll see what's going on in 2022, and uh, it should be an interesting class. I definitely think LSU could easily have the top class in the nation, top class in the SEC for sure. And uh, with all the talent they got in state, and uh, it should be we got Will Campbell's announcement coming up in nine days, and uh, LSU is definitely the favorite for that one. So that'd be a big boost to that class as well. Um, and that's all we're going to talk about today with recruiting. All right, guys, man, that's all we're going to talk about today. 
uh, thank you guys for watching man if you like the video make sure you hit that like button go ahead and leave a comment let me know what you think as well uh, if you haven't already man follow LSU recruiting HQ on Twitter man we got a lot of things coming up next week uh, it should be a fun show next week and uh, hope you guys come back and join us thanks